British Racing Motors, Wikipedia article audio. British Racing Motors was a British Formula One motor racing team. Founded in 1945 and based in the market town of Bourne in Lincolnshire, it participated from 1950 to 1977, competing in 197 Grands Prix and winning 17. BRM won the constructor's title in 1962 when its driver Graham Hill became world champion. In 1963, 1964, 1965, and 1971, BRM came second in the constructors' competition. BRM was founded just after the Second World War by Raymond Mays, who had built several Hillclimb and road racing cars under the Arab brand before the war, and Peter Berthon, a longtime associate. May's pre-war successes inspired him to build an all-British Grand Prix car for the post-war era as a national prestige project, with financial and industrial backing from the British motor industry and its suppliers channeled through a trust fund. History BRM V16 This proved to be an unwieldy way of organizing and financing the project, and as some of the backers withdrew, Disappointed with the team's slow progress and early results, it fell to one of the partners in the trust, Alfred Owen of the Rubri Owen Group of Companies. Owen, whose group primarily manufactured car parts, took over the team in its entirety. Between 1954 and 1970 the team entered its works F1 cars under the official name of the Owen Racing Organization. Berthon and Mays continued to run the team on Rubri Owen's behalf into the 1960s, before it was handed over to Louis Stanley, the husband of Sir Alfred's sister Jean Owen. A factory was set up in Spalding Road, Bourne, Lincolnshire, behind Eastgate House, Mays' family home, in a building called the Maltings. Several people involved with ERA returned to the firm to work for BRM, including Harry Mundy and Eric Richter. The team also had access to a test facility at Folkingham Aerodrome. The first post-war rules for the top level of motor racing allowed 1.5-liter supercharged or 4.5-liter normally aspirated engines. BRM's first engine design was an extremely ambitious 1.5-liter supercharged V16. Rolls-Royce was contracted to produce centrifugal superchargers, rather than the more commonly used roots type. The design concept of the V16 had not been used extensively on automobiles before so that design problems were many and the engine did not fire for the first time until June 1949. It proved to be outstandingly powerful but its output was produced over a very limited range of engine speed, coming on suddenly if the throttle was applied carelessly, resulting in wheel spin as the narrow tires proved unable to transfer the power to the road. This made the car very touchy to drive. Engineer Tony Rudd was seconded to BRM from Rolls-Royce to develop the supercharging system and remained involved with BRM for nearly 20 years. The Type 15, which was the designation for the V16 car, won the first two races it actually started, the Formula Libra and Formula One events at Goodwood in September 1950, driven by Reg Parnell. However, it was never to be so successful again. The engine proved unreliable and difficult to develop, and the team were not up to the task of improving the situation. A string of failures caused much embarrassment, and the problems were still unsolved when the Commission Sportive Internationale announced in 1952 that for 1954, a new engine formula of 2.5 liters naturally aspirated or 750 cubic centimeters supercharged would take effect. Meanwhile, 
the organizers of all the Grands Prix counting for the World Championship elected to run their races for Formula 2 for the next two years, as Alfa Romeo had pulled out of racing and BRM were unable to present race-worthy cars, leaving no credible opposition to Ferrari other than outdated Lago Talbots and the odd OSCA. The V16S continued to race in minor Formula 1 races and in British Formula Libra events until the mid-50s, battles with Tony van der Velle's thin-wall special Ferrari 375 being a particular highlight of the British scene. Crisis The Type 25 was BRM's next car. It used an extremely oversquare 2.5L atmospheric four-cylinder engine designed by Stuart Trezelian and it arrived late and took a lot of development, it was so late that the Owen organization started the 2.5L formula with a Maserati 250F. The P25 was initially unsuccessful, not winning a race until a victory at the Dutch Grand Prix in 1959. Colin Chapman helped to improve the car in 1956. Sterling Moss believed that the BRM engine was superior to the Coventry Climax unit used in his Cooper, and a P25 was briefly run in 1959 by the British Racing Partnership, for Moss and Rob Walker also backed the construction of a Cooper BRM to gain access to the engine. The P25 was becoming highly competitive just as the rear-engined Cooper started to become dominant, the P48 was a quick reaction to this, using major components from the P25 but in rear-engined format. The P48 was revised for the 1.5L rules in 1961, but once again BRM's own engine was not ready and the cars had to run with a Coventry Climax four-cylinder unit in adapted P48 chassis, achieving very little in terms of results. Champions The firm moved to a purpose-built workshop on an adjoining site in the spring of 1960, but when the 1.5-liter atmospheric Formula One regulation was introduced in 1961, Alfred Owen was threatening to pull the plug unless race victories were achieved very soon. By the end of the 1961 season BRM had managed to build an engine designed by Peter Berthon and Aubrey Woods which was on a PAR with the Dino V6 used by Ferrari and the Coventry Climax V8 used by other British teams. However, the real change was the promotion by Owen of an engineer who had been with the team since 1950, Tony Rudd, to the position of Chief Development Engineer. Rudd was the first professional engineer to exercise full technical control over the team, and basic engineering and reliability problems which had plagued the team for years began to vanish. He was given greater responsibility in 1960 after two of the drivers, Graham Hill and Dan Gurney, went on strike and told Alfred Owen they would not drive again and in early 1962 full executive authority was given to Tony Rudd. Raymond Mays and Peter Berthon were sidelined. The team had designed their first mid-engined car for 1960, matching the other teams, and won the World Drivers' Championship with Graham Hill as driver, in 1962 with the P57. During 1965, 210 bhp at 11,000 rpm was the rated power. However at the high-speed 1965 Italian GP an uprated version was raced with 220 bhp at 11,750 rpm for short bursts. A planned four-valve per cylinder version in cooperation with Westlake Engineering never materialized. As part of Owen's attempt to make BRM pay its way, the V8 engine was sold to privateers and appeared in a number of other chassis during the 1.5L formula, particularly in private Lotus chassis and in smaller marks such as BRP. BRM H16 
A number of privateers acquired 1961 and 1962 BRMs during this period, including Maurice Trintignant and Kuderia Centro Sud. These cars continued to race for many years. BRM V12 The monocoque BRM P261 V8 car was soon developed and these ran on through the 1.5-liter formula and performed useful service in the early races of the subsequent 3.0-liter formula. In 1965 Jackie Stewart was signed to Partner Hill. He took his first Grand Prix win at Monza in his debut season, and won the first World Championship race of the new 3-liter formula with a car fitted with a Tasman 2-liter V8. Once again BRM were not ready for the start of a new formula and the old cars continued to be used, even on occasion after the H16 was ready. Decline and Fall For 1966 the engine regulations changed to permit 3-liter atmospheric engines. BRM refused Peter Berthon and Aubrey Woods's proposal to build a V12, and instead built an ingenious but very complicated engine, designed by Tony Rudd and Jeff Johnson, the H16, which essentially used two flat-8 engines one above the other, with the crankshafts geared together. BRM found the H16 attractive because it was initially planned to share design elements and components with the successful 1.5-liter V8. While the engine was powerful, it was also heavy and unreliable, Rudd claimed that his drawings were not followed accurately and many of the castings were much thicker and heavier than he had specified. At that time, BRM earned the nickname of British Racing Misery. BRM, Lotus, and various privateers had been using enlarged versions of the BRM 1.5 V8 of up to 2.1 litres in 1966, as competitive 3-litre engines were in short supply in the first year of the new regulations. Lotus also took up the H16 as an interim measure until the Cosworth DFV was ready building the Lotus 43 to house it, and Jim Clark managed to win the U.S. Grand Prix at Watkins Glen with this combination. It was the only victory for this engine in a world championship race. Lotus built the similar Lotus 42 designed for Indianapolis with a 4.2-liter version of the H16 but this was never race-worthy, the cars were raced with Ford V8s instead. Side Projects The H16 engine was redesigned with a narrow-angle four-valve head and magnesium main castings to reduce weight and increase power, but was never raced as BRM decided to use the V12 unit which was being sold to other F1 and sports car teams with encouraging results. The H16 was replaced by a V12 designed by Jeff Johnson. It had been intended for sports car use, but was first used in F1 by the McLaren M5A. Back at the works, the early V1 two years were lean ones. In 1967 the two-valve layout gave about 360 bhp at 9000 rpm. In 1968 this had increased to 390 bhp at 9,750 rpm. Jeff Johnson updated the design by adding a four-valve head, based on the H16 485 bhp four-valve layout, this improved the V12S power output to 452 bhp at 10,500 rpm and eventually to a claimed 465 bhp during 1969. In 1973, Lewis Stanley claimed 490 bhp at 11,750 rpm. The design and building of the first V12 chassis, the P126 was contracted to former Lotus and Eagle designer Len Terry S. Transatlantic Automotive Consultants. The cars first appeared during the 1968 Tasman Championship, powered by 2.5-liter versions of the engine, 
temporary team driver Bruce McLaren winning the fourth round of the series at Tir Tonga but being generally unimpressed with the car. BRM themselves built further examples of the Terry design, which were designated P133 and 1968 team drivers Mike Spence and Pedro Roder. Guez appeared competitive in early season non-championship races at Brands Hatch and Silverstone, but then Spence was killed driving the Lotus 56 turbine during qualifying at Indianapolis. Spence's replacement, Richard Atwood, finished a good second to Graham Hill's Lotus at Monaco, but after this results went downhill and the season petered out ignominiously. For 1969 the four-valve per-cylinder engine was developed and a new slimline car, the P139 was built. John Surtees joined as the team's lead driver backed up by Jack Oliver. Roger. Guez was shunted into the semi-works Parnell team. Surtees' time at BRM was not a happy one and, despite the fact that a ground-effect wing car was designed, this was never constructed and the team's performances were lackluster. Surtees left after a single season along with Tony Rudd who went to Lotus, and Jeff Johnson who departed for Austin Morris. The team regrouped with Tony Southgate as designer and Roger. Guez brought back into the fold to partner Oliver, and gained its first V12 victory when Roger. Guez won the 1970 Belgian Grand Prix in a P153 with further victories for Joe Sifford and Peter Gethin in 1971 in the P160. The team had reached one of its intermittent peaks of success. Sadly both Sifford and Roger Guez were killed before the 1972 season and the team had to regroup completely again. Their last world championship victory came when Jean-Pierre Beltois drove a stunning race to win the rain-affected 1972 Monaco Grand Prix with the P160. He also won the non-championship 1972 World Championship victory race later in the year. The 1972 campaign was generally chaotic, having acquired major sponsorship. Louis Stanley originally planned to field up to six cars of varying designs including P153S, P160S and P180S and actually ran up to five for a mix of paying and paid drivers until it became obvious that it was completely overstretched and the team's sponsors insisted that the team should cut back to a more reasonable level and only three cars were run in 1973 for Beltwas, Lauda. Enrique Azanai. The last notable performance was Beltis' second place finish in the 1974 South African Grand Prix with the Mike Pillbeam designed P201, a car with a pyramidal monocoque, very different from the curvy Coke bottle Southgate cars. The Owen organization ended its support of the team and it was run on a lower key basis by Lewis Stanley and some of the Bourne personnel as Stanley BRM until 1977. Old P201S were initially used, with the team hoping for a revival with the bulky and vaguely Ferrari-like P207, which failed entirely. Serial millionaire and amateur racer John Jordan purchased some of the team's assets when the team finally folded, and backed the building of a pair of P230 cars by CTG, with the aim of competing in the national-level Aurora AFX Formula One Championship. Teddy Pilletta raced a P207 during 1978 with modest success, finishing fourth at Olton Park and fifth at Brands Hatch. One chassis also apparently raced in the revived Can-Am series. BRM Engine Sales The team became involved with Rover S Gas Turbine Project, with the Rover BRM Gas Turbine car running at Le Mans in 1963 and 1965, it was damaged in testing and missed the 1964 race. 
BRM were also involved with Donald Campbell's gas turbine Bluebird Proteus CN7 project. In later years they also built an unsuccessful Can-Am car, and dabbled with larger versions of the H16 engine for the Indianapolis 500. As a part of the Owen organization, BRM also worked on tuned road car engines for Ford, Chrysler, and others. The BRM tuned version of the 1,557 cubic centimeters Lotus Ford twin cam engine was particularly popular as the special equipment option on the Lotus LA. This improved version of the Lotus Ford engine was used by Tony Rudd when he left BRM for Lotus to form the basis of the Lotus produced Sprint version of the engine used in the LA Sprint, LA Plus 2S130, Europa JPS, and Caterham 7. Sponsorship and Colors BRM were contracted by Chrysler Competition Department to develop a 16-valve cylinder head for the Hillman Avenger engine. It proved unreliable, underpowered, and unable to compete with the Ford Rally team's proven Cosworth BDB-powered RS1600 Escorts. The Owen organization expected BRM to turn a profit through sales of racing engines, the four-cylinder appeared briefly in a Cooper BRM special for Sterling Moss but found no other customers. The V8 powered many 1.5-liter cars, including various private Lotuses and Brabham's as well as the BRP Works team. Enlarged Tasman series VAS of between 1.9 and 2.1 L were popular in 1966 as a stopgap before full 3-liter engines were widely available. These units were also sold to Matra to power its early sports prototypes. A 1-liter Formula 2 engine was also made available, based on half of the F1 V8. This was not successful in a formula dominated by Cosworth, Ford and eventually Honda engines. Team Lotus used the ill-fated H16 engine, scoring its only win. Later use of BRM name Formula One World Championship Results Grand Prix Winners Exhibition V12S were sold to other constructors of which the most notable were Cooper, John Wire, and McLaren. Matra entered into a contract with BRM to collaborate in the design of their own V12 engine, but when this became public knowledge the French constructor was forced to drop the involvement with BRM and restart development with a French partner, as its government funding was threatened but there were still close resemblances between the finished Matra engine and the BRM. The first BRMs were a pale duck egg green, but this was later replaced for aesthetic reasons by a very dark metallic shade of grey-green. During the team's Owen-owned years the cars bore simple Owen Racing Organization signage. The BRP entered BRM for Moss and Hermann was a non-metallic duck egg green. Centrosud ran their cars in Italian red, Trintignant's car was in French blue. At one point in the 1960s Alfred Owen's brother Ernest wanted the team to paint their cars orange with black trim, orange being the Owen organization's corporate color, used for a band around the nose of the cars and for the mechanics overalls, Rudd pointed out that orange was the Dutch racing color when such things were still honored, through most of the 1960s the cars ran with Owen orange bands round the nose. The team acquired significant commercial sponsorship from Yardley for the 1970s season, running in white with black, gold and ochre stripes in a stylized Y wrapping around the car's bodywork losing this deal to McLaren for 1972 and replacing it by Marlboro's familiar white and red colors. Ironically this deal was also lost to McLaren for 1974, to be replaced briefly by Model in a pale green and silver color scheme. 
As Stanley BRM the cars initially ran in red, white and blue with no major sponsorship. For the team Swan Song it was sponsored by Rotary Watches and ran in pale blue and white. The Jordan BRM P230 was black and gold. BRM raced again as part of a project by John Mangalutzi for a Group C sports car known as the P351 with the backing of the Owen family to use the BRM name. Unfortunately the car was short-lived and unsuccessful. In 1997 Keith Wiggins and Pacific Racing would resurrect the car as the BRM P301, using the BRM name only because it was technically a BRM-built chassis but had no other connection to British racing motors. Heavily modified into an open cockpit sportska, the car was equally unsuccessful. A special edition Rover 200 was produced to commemorate the Rover BRM gas turbine car, this was finished in Brooklands green with an orange lower, front grille and silver details. In October 2008, a press release announced that B Automobiles LTD BRM B4 of would compete in the British Speed Hill Climb Championships. Computer Simulation as of 2011, the car had yet to leave the drawing board. In 2012, Bobby Neat, granddaughter of Alfred Ernest Owen and daughter of Jean Stanley wrote of her memories of BRM racing in the 1950s and 60s in her book Conspiracy of Secrets. The BRM team won 17 Formula One Grands Prix as follows. There is a small exhibition about Raymond Mays, including his interest in BRM, together with the trophies won by BRM while it was owned by the Owen Organization, at Bourne Civic Society's Heritage Center. A drivable, detailed virtual recreation of the BRM H16 powered P83 P115 and the BRM P261 was made available in the PC based F1 simulation Grand Prix Legends. 1950 not awarded, 1951 not awarded, 1952 not awarded, 1953 not awarded, 1954 not awarded. 1955 not awarded, 1956 not awarded, 1957 not awarded, 1958 Van Wall, 1959 Cooper, 1960 Cooper, 1961 Ferrari, 1962 BRM, 1963 Lotus, 1964 Ferrari, 1965 Lotus, 1966 Brabham, 1967 Brabham, 1968 Lotus, 1969 Matra, 1970 Lotus, 1971 Tyrell, 1972 Lotus, 1973 Lotus, 1974 McLaren, 1975 Ferrari, 1976 Ferrari, 1977 Ferrari, 1978 Lotus, 1979 Ferrari, 1980 Williams, 1981 Williams, 1982 Ferrari, 1983 Ferrari, 1984 McLaren, 1985 McLaren, 1986 Williams, 1987 Williams. 1988 McLaren, 1989 McLaren, 1990 McLaren, 1991 McLaren, 1992 Williams, 1993 Williams, 1994 Williams, 1995 Benetton, 1996 Williams, 1997 Williams, 1998 McLaren. 1999 Ferrari 2000 Ferrari, 2001 Ferrari, 2002 Ferrari, 2003 Ferrari, 2004 Ferrari, 
2005 Renault, 2006 Renault, 2007 Ferrari, 2008 Ferrari, 2009 Braun, 2010 Red Bull, 2011 Red Bull, 2012 Red Bull, 2013 Red Bull, 2014 Mercedes, 2015 Mercedes, 2016 Mercedes, 2017 Mercedes.